Okay, I'm here with David Jukes, and, and uh, David, man, is one of the old-time treasure hunters. I met him clear back in, when was it, the early 90s? 90s, yeah. Sometime in the early 90s, and, and David, man, had a, uh, it was out there beating the, beating the trails, exploring the mountains, finding some interesting things, especially in the Rock Creek area, and he was kind of an ex expert in that area, but uh, I hooked up with David again when we started having these uh, Moon Lake gatherings the, the, at, uh, up at, uh, in Aldemont, you know, where the, I call them the Treasure Hunters Rendezvous, but it's also, it's, it's kind of a, you know, they talk about, they have to talk about, because there's so much stuff in Utah, especially in the UN is here. You know, there's, there's the crazy amount of UFO stuff that goes on in the UN Mountain, especially with uh, Skimwalker Ranch there, and then there's a lot of Bigfoot sightings and things goes on there, but the main thing, my main thing, is the treasure hunting because of the Lost Roads mine and that in the UN, but it's all there in the UN. Um, and so we, we talk about a little bit of all this at, these, at the Moon Lake gatherings, but my main thing is the treasure hunter, and Dave's a treasure hunter, and so mm -hmm. Dave, man, Dave, uh, I met him up at the Moon Lake gathering again, and uh, he helped us with all our signs and doing, and he done a great job. He turned our our, our show man into a first class uh, uh, um, event because of all the signings and stuff he put out, David. But anyways, David, man, I want a story out of you of, of one of your adventures up in uh, up in the U.S. So talk to me. All right. Well, I like the Rock Creek area, Moon Lake area. My neighbor when I was a kid talked about the Lost Roads Mine, his dad and whatnot. So then I just took to that, took interest to it. So after years went by, I got older, started hearing stories, so I started roaming. Figured, all right, got to go out and beat the bushes and the trees and go look for it yourself. So up on top of Blind Stream, up above Rock Creek, Upper Stillwaters, there's an old road that goes out and looks over the South Fork of Rock Creek. And uh, we went wandering around up there and uh, found an old, it looked like an old trail, not no forest service or hiking trails or anything that cut down out of this ravine, cut across the boulder field. And uh, we went walking down there and cut across that, that trail and came up into some trees. I have a picture of it. There's a picture that looks like a Maltese cross that's kind of grown over a little bit, but still pretty crossy looking. And then a long shaft looking cut out underneath the cross, about three feet long on this great big pine tree. And it's up there pretty high and it's almost to the no tree growing. So those trees are growing pretty slow. Anyway, I'm thinking about that. Years before that, we drove up the same road and we seen a pile of rocks and a hole. So I jumped out of the car and there was a hole that went down probably about 300 feet deep straight down. I don't know if you, have you ever heard about that one up there, Terry? Where's that by? Up by? It's a blind stream up, up, they call it, uh, what, Lake Basin up there? Oh, I think 300 I foot deep have. shaft that went down in there, right? And we're thinking, okay, what's What's this all about? Is this the one where the guys went down there and they heard something screaming and yelling at them, running towards them? I don't know. It could be this, one of the stories. Then I read a story in either Thompson's Blue Book or the other Faded Footprints book that talks about a guy. They took a Jeep, it's basically with the winch. We're going to lower somebody down in there to see what if there's any side drifts or anything else out there. But you could, you could feel wind. And air coming out of that hole so it's like there was passageways up there and whatnot and then there was a little bottle claim papers uh, yeah. billing wire to the tree yeah. and they were all tore up in there somebody had a claim on that and then there was a pile of rocks I don't know if anybody's seen this or not but there was a pile of rocks about three or four feet high about as big around as this square coffee table that was about a half inch thick white chalk like on one side, half inch thick, just pure white. Like, I don't know, it's hard to describe it. And then on the other side of it had like a skin of um, just a yellow, golden color dirt, kind of about, probably about this tanny color right there on the uh -huh. one side of the dirt. A whole pile of that, just separate. Huh? There was no, you couldn't see the dig of where they 
piled all that dirt. Yeah. So I don't know how old the hole was, how old it was. We dropped the rock. My dad timed it, how far it went down. It took about 12 seconds before it hit, and he calculated the speed of rock, you know. And yeah, yeah. And figured about 300 foot deep. So anyway, years later, went back up, tried to find the hole again. Couldn't find it. Mm. Went back and forth. I knew it had, it, you could see it right from the road. Yeah. Because you drove right there and there was a turn on that road. I keep going back. I don't know if it got filled up, but we got a camera, a video, VHS video camera back then, tied up 300, 400 feet of rope. We were going to lower the camera down in there and, you know, and spin it around yeah. every, had it marked every 10 foot. Uh -huh. We're going to see if, see if there's any tunnels, you know, side drift going off of that. And what the, what the purpose of that hole was, I have no idea. But, so I don't know if anybody knows about that. We could never find it again. So, so you couldn't find it again to drop the video camera mm -mm. down? And I've been back multiple times, years and years again later, and I still can't find it. You know, that, that happens to a lot of different people. They find some things, they know right where it's at, and they go back, I mean, they see the markings, the things that it has to be right there, mm -hmm. yet they can't find and it. Then one of the same times when we went back looking for that, we found another hole, smaller hole. We had to move a couple of rocks, and you could climb down in about 12 feet, and there was wind. I mean, actual wow. pretty good air movement coming out, and that's right there by well, the area was. where I knew that big hole was. So I don't know if there's natural fissures. Oh, that looked like more like a natural fissure hole huh? than than a, a, a so dugout hole. Right along the fault okay. line there, then, huh? And it looks the hole when you was looking east, Rock Creek, you know, Upper Stillwater, the dam and everything is down there. When you're standing at the little road that you get out, it's only about 50 feet off the road. You could see the pile of dirt and the hole from that road that you come in on, you know, to go get that. And uh, also that same time when we found the other hole, we were looking for the big hole. <laughs> there was, uh, I went wandering out through this field. I seen a bunch of rock markers through that. There's a field out to the north of the road now, right, right kind of by that same area, looking towards South Fort. Found a bunch of road markers right there and I followed that down and I found uh, a wood a piece of old wood that had the the name Happy Jack. Oh, really? The Happy Jack, that Indian guy, I guess you know, and he was had his name for, carved on there. For those that don't know who Happy Jack is, you want to tell who he was? You want me to? Go ahead. So Happy Jack was just one of the Native Americans, one of the Utes, um, who who was uh, friends with 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 Rhodes, who would kind of watch his backside while he went into some of these sacred vines and was getting the gold out of them. And so, yeah, Happy, there's Happy Jack's the one who discovered the mines there at Park City. Really? Yeah. Over there too, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I've read him, Happy Jack, and all these books and all these stories you, you read quite often about him. Yeah. And uh, that was that. And so, getting back to the tree that we found, thinking that long stem, the Maltese cross is supposedly like a king's king's mine or something, right? Is what I've read on symbols. Well, I'm thinking that maybe that could have been an old one of them. Yeah. I just don't see why would anybody, and you couldn't see no telling, so it's not a modern dig, or you'd see the dirt somewhere, you would think, out of that deep of a hole. And, and the Spaniards would do that. They would, they would move their tailings, scatter them out so that it wasn't visible that there was a mine there. So yeah. either that's what that tree was assembling, because when you come down that trail, and we got thinking, blind stream road, modern day that's pretty steep canyon to go down all them big switchbacks back in the time there's that other one that where we found that trail that i think originally spaniards or whoever came in here went down that little draw went into south fork because south fork's not as steep once you get in there i think they came down that trail went down into south fork then down into the rock creek area maybe originally uh. Yeah. And modern day, I think they cut the road, yeah. the blind stream road that it is now. I don't know if they follow two roads. And maybe there's a mine over there too. Go on the other direction. I mean, I'm sure there's multiples yeah. up in that area. So it's just one area. I've wandered a lot of ground up in there and it's quite interesting. So, so. it sounds like today, to me, David, we got an adventure to do this summer. Go and find this, this uh, shaft. Yeah. So, so, that, so, so with that said, 
you know, we're getting ready to, we're having the, uh, the Moon Lake gathering again this year. It's going to be the last weekend in, in July. Right. You know, it's, it's, uh, I don't, I don't know if, if, if we're going to be having, having it anymore after this year, you know, it, we'll have to see because, you know, uh, Kent's having health problems. He's got an infection in his leg and they might have to cut his yes. leg off. And Mark's got having some heart Not problems. Good. And so, so, you know, I don't know. This might be the last year we have this. I don't know. We'll just have to see. But but this is free to everybody. You know, it's going to be in the Altamont uh, City Park, and it's right there in the in right there where the drainages come right down from the four the three four major drainages that come down where all the where a lot of the most of the Spanish activity took place in the Uinta Mountains. You know, it's right there the drainage of Rock Creek, right there the drainage of Moon Lake, right there the drainage of of uh, of, of uh, the Yellowstone, and and there's so much activity went there. And then you go outside of that, and you got you got more. You got Skinwalker Ranch. You got you know you got the the the, the in my opinion the most spectacular petroglyphs in the whole United States there at McConkie Ranch there in Vernal and Dry Fork Canyon which look to me like they're either Egyptian or right. Aztecs. These things are these things are adorned with jewelry, breastplates, crowns, you know, they're life size. Not only was they pecked in and carved in man, but they was painted. When these things was fresh, these had to have been spectacular, oh, you I know. Bet. And, and people need to to, to take the time and see these if they've never ever seen these before. But anyways, so we are going to have this uh, gathering again. And uh, we'll be putting out a list of who our speakers are and the events we're going to be having. But uh, like I said, this is free to everybody, but it's not free to us. And last year, you know, we had people donating things and we had some raffles and that more than covered for last year and it's going to help pay for a little bit for this year. You know, so, so, um, but what we are doing is, is, you know, you don't have to if you don't want, just come and have a great time, you know. But uh, if you can, if you can donate, great. But uh, um, what David's done here is put together some some T-shirts, some cups, and some things like that. To, that uh, part of the proceeds is going to go to pay for help pay for this Moon Lake gathering. So walk me through some of this day stuff, David. What you got? They won't be sold there at the gatherings because you buy online only. So if you want if you want to get one. Now's your opportunity to go online and then it says Moon Lake Gathering down the back. So cool. So can you walk me through on this website how they get to it and buy yeah. it and all that and what we, all you got there? Yeah, let's go show you that. Okay. Okay, walk me through, David, how we get to this website you got set up. Alright. Click on the internet. Okay, you go to Sazzle.com backslash store backslash Mr. J two productions will be the store on Zazzle. Or and I'll, I'll, so, so what I'll do is I'll put a link to this in the description. Okay. Okay. Then once you get into the store, you can scroll down and there's three icons. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I see Terry Carter treasure <laughs> under there. Hey, that's kind of cool looking. So, yeah. Hey, I like that. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> the Moon Lake Gathering the shirts are into t-shirts, merchandise are your cups, and then I got one especially for Terry Carter's t-shirts and cups too. So you click on the icon, brings up the page, shows you all the shirts, all the different designs. So if you want to look at one, you just click on it, it brings it up. You can scroll down through the, click on the back, see the back design. Um, you can even see a little video clip what the dude looks like with the shirt moving which is kind of neat. Then you can come over here to the right, got your size. The sizes run I think pretty accurate. Uh, the stuff that I've bought so far it seems to fit just like advertised. Um, they even go clear down to a 6X but that one's sold out it's saying. And then you select your size. Then you go down to the next thing on the style. What I've shown is basic bl basic black shirt, men's t-shirt. Then you can click on a, another style. You can even click on a woman's t-shirt. And it will show you what the woman looks like with the shirt on. The woman's style of shirt. They've got a, a v-neck. they got a, a, a tank top. 
So you got multiple different styles. Now you can go down here and select your colors. So let me go back to the to the men's. And you can go down to more. You can even get uh, baseball shirt, long sleeves, polo shirts. I think they even have some for kids, possibly. Uh, sweatshirts, hoodies. So a big vi vi wide variety of choices for yourself. Cool. And then one, and then so I'll go back to. And so you've got multiple designs there. You have. Yeah, I've got ten different shirt uh, graphic designs. Some geared just for the Moon Lake gathering in general. Um, let me go. Uh, let finish this off. So once you pick your stylish shirt, you can come down. They got a whole rainbow of colors on your basic T-shirts. We'll have the. Then it even previews it, what it looks like. Some graphics Look work on. good on others, but so you get a choice of what you want, you yeah, know. Yeah. So the graphics will look, you know, some are a little bit bright. What I've found in printed, they've looked pretty good on, on different colors. So cool. you got a whole variety of colors to choose from. Then you can go back and preview all your other designs. Um, here's one with so if you're a Bigfoot guy there's one specifically designed for Bigfoot Moon Lake Gathering the back says Squatch on the back same thing pick your size your color and then once you do that you add it to your cart so I'll add that well, I've got to select the size first select your size so I'll do a do a tan color and then you can pick a quantity. You got 15%. They have random sales. Now that's what you might want to do is maybe look at this for about four days because they'll come up with, sometimes I'll have a 40% off sale. Oh, wow. So yeah, you can get some real good, good pricing. See this right here at 15% is $22 for a t-shirt, which is pretty much cool. a going rate for shirts out there on the market. And then you add that to your cart. And then once you got your cart, you can go to your checkout and then you pay it. They'll ship it to you within, I, I'd say, we had one that went over a week, but it was a, a, a an extra large size. So I don't know if it was that, that they had trouble getting or something, but all these other, like men's large and all the other stuff I've got, I've got them within like two or three days. Cool. It, come, it comes pretty quick. So, so. so. So I've seen you got Bigfoot t-shirts for the Moon Lake Gathering. You got UFO type um, t-shirts for the Moon Lake. You got treasure hunting ones? Because, man, I've, I'm a treasure I've, hunter. I've got to get the treasure hunter one complete. I've got it almost ready. I've got another one that's just a Moon Lake Gathering design. Um, and I've got one with the, the signs. These are the signs that I made for the park. So you've got one with the, right, the four cool. signs on there for Moon Lake. Then it on the back it has just Moon Lake Gathering. Most of them say Moon Lake Gathering on the back in various different fonts. Um, so yeah, you can come in style this year. I got another Bigfoot one, but I'm gonna get another one for treasure hunting. Then I've got the UFO one that you're seeing out there on the couch. So yeah, so I give multiple choices. You can come in all different colors, so hopefully We'll see everybody in style this year. Cool. Hey, man, I like it. Uh, I, I, one more thing. We've got to go get Terry's here. I'm really... <laughs> <laughs> Click on Terry's if you... <laughs> so if you want one to do with Terry Carter, I'm going to get me one. I, I've watched Terry for many, many, many years on YouTube. And, man, I and really so like that. We got here, Terry's shirt here. Click up bigger. So Terry Carter, treasure hunter, little skull guy, and where stories are told. I, I came up with that. I thought that was fitting uh, for I, that. I like that. <laughs> and then on the back, it has the Terry Carter, then YouTube logo with, with the website or the YouTube cool. link, link on there. So you can sport that and tell all your friends about that. <laughs> Go watch Terry's videos. A <laughs> lot of good watching. A lot of good stories. So same thing here. You want a different color? Go ahead and 
choose your color and style the ladies can wear one too and their lady shirt so it's we're all geared to go so I like it and we got coffee mugs with the matching your t-shirt so you can either get you can get a uh, one with all white you can choose one with the black on the inside you can choose one with green on the inside so you got a little color choice little personalized personalize what you like you know ladies can have a pink one if, if they want to if they want a pink one in there they all look pretty neat so you can choose a 11 ounce or you can choose a bigger one so there's all different styles you can choose from you want a big metal metal cup so and a big tumbler you know fancy one so that's what's cool about this place you got a lot of options cool so it's a lot of fun and then his other t-shirt I made Terry this plaque. You did make me that plaque, man. And so I figured that would make a real good t-shirt yeah. front. So I turned that one into a t-shirt. And then on the back, I just put Terry Carter YouTube going on there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Cool. Same thing. Choose your color or just get your generic black. Whichever suits you. Help support Terry and all his work on all of his videos. Awesome. Awesome job. So, well, David, man, I, with that said, I appreciate everything you've done for the gathering and to help it get going with the, the support that you've given and, and you've given your time and effort and stuffs freely and, 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 uh, man, I really appreciate you and thanks for your stories. And with that said, that's a wrap. <laughs>